Oof. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about commitment while taking a look at the story of a woman who really gave it her all. Speaking of, you're ready to give it our all on this workout? You know it. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. You ready? Yeah. yeah Let's absolutely. go get healthy. We'll get right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm ready. Oh. Hey, I'm Carter. <laughs> And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about commitment, which is making a plan and putting it into practice. Woo, yeah, good workouts. Oh. Hey, uh, how many um, how many miles did we uh, run? Uh, uh, one. Really? Yeah. And and how many um, how many sit-ups did we do? Uh, like 12? Oh, that's a new record. My man. <laughs> Woo! Woo. Okay, come on, man. One more mile and then we can take a break. Dude, we're exhausted. We can't stop now. Commitment, right? Plus, I want to be strong and look like Captain America. Zeke, you never need to try looking like anyone but you. Thanks, dude. Besides, when it comes to getting fit, resting is just as important as working out. I don't know, that sounds kind of lazy. Hey, resting is what allows us to do our best. It gives our body a chance to heal and recover. I mean, pushing yourself too hard during a workout can cause serious injury. Okay, but I still need some energy. Oh, Hey, you got any energy drinks? Nah. Plus, most of the ones from the store are terrible for you. You say that like there's another kind. Well, yeah, we can make our own. Really? Well, I'm in. Let's make it. Today, we're making a healthy energy drink substitute that I like to call a summer splash. Okay, but what makes it different from the kind you get at the store? Most of those energy drinks are filled with sugar, caffeine, and artificial flavors. We're gonna make something packed with vitamins and electrolytes instead. Electro what? You know how tired you are after you work out? You mean like right now? <laughs> yeah, that's partly because of dehydration. Oh, I know about that. Dehydration is when your body loses more fluids than it takes in. Exactly. When we exercise, we sweat a lot. Sweat is made up of water and salt. Your body sweats to cool you off when you get too hot. So, when you sweat a lot, your body loses fluids, causing you to become dehydrated. So basically, your insides dry up, like how a grape turns into a raisin. Spot on. But can't you just fix dehydration by drinking water? Sure, but electrolytes can help. Electrolytes are minerals and salts that help your body absorb fluids, like water, better and faster. Cool, so how does this summer splash work? Care to read the recipe? Yeah, of course. Let's see, for today's tasty experiment, you'll need four cups unsweetened coconut water, one and a third cups of water, two thirds of a cup of lime juice, a quarter of a teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt, and three teaspoons of raw honey. Coconut water is amazing. It's filled with electrolytes and has five times more potassium than most sports drinks. Okay, mix up all your ingredients until the salt dissolves. And enjoy. Simple, easy, and hopefully tasty. Nice summer splash. Thank you. Ready for the taste test? Oh yeah. Cheers. Oh, that is super refreshing. Ooh, oh. I can already feel my energy returning. Told you, you gotta take care of yourself before you can give it your all. Speaking of giving your all, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Mark, one of the four gospels that tell the story of Jesus. 
Mark was a close friend of Peter and likely recorded Peter's stories of following Jesus for the new believers then and for us today. For three years, Jesus traveled all across Israel and Judah with his disciples. He gave himself completely to helping people and teaching them about God's kingdom. During his travels, Jesus healed the sick, performed miracles, and gave epic sermons to huge crowds. In everything he did, Jesus lived fully for God and taught others to do the same. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Today's story is about a woman who truly gave everything that she had for God. One day, Jesus was teaching in the temple courtyard as some religious leaders watched. Now, these men wanted to get rid of Jesus because he challenged the way they had always done things. They often looked for ways to trick or trap him. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Watch out for the teachers of the law. They love to have the most important seats. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. A short time later, Jesus went and sat down across from the place at the temple where people came to present their offerings to God. As Jesus watched, some rich men dropped large amounts of money into the offering boxes. The disciples probably noticed too. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, they must really love God. And striking poses, apparently. Just then, a poor widow came up and put two very small copper coins into the offering box. They were only worth a couple pennies. Jesus called his friends to come to him. Doesn't sound like much, huh? But you have to understand, at that time, most women couldn't work at a job outside the home. They had to depend on their husbands. So a widow, a, a woman whose husband had died, often had very little money or anything else. Jesus knew all about the widow at the temple. That poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. They all gave a lot because they're rich she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. Wow, that makes two little coins seem like a million bucks. Jesus looked beyond outside appearances. He knew that it was easy for the rich man to give lots of money, they'd never miss it. But the poor widow gave up everything that she had to honor God and we still remember and tell her story today. The end. So, even though this widow gave the least amount of money, she actually gave the most. Exactly. Giving isn't always about what or how much you give, it's about the heart behind it. So, what's our part in the story? Well, the widow gave everything she had to God. Even though it wasn't much, she didn't keep anything back. And we can do the same. Sometimes that could be giving money, but often it's how we give other things we have, like, like our time or a good attitude. So say my mom tells me to clean my room. Instead of just chucking some shirts in the hamper, I could actually put things away. That's a good one. Or if you're hanging out with a friend, you could share your favorite toys and games instead of just the ones you don't care about. That's right. See, if you keep your eyes open, you can find ways to live fully for God in everything you do, whether it's at home, at school, or anywhere. Jesus once told his followers, anything you do for one of the least important of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do for me. So anytime we do stuff for other people, it's like we're doing it for God. I think you got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Practice living for God. Speaking of practice, are you ready to get back training and finish that last mile? You know it. Ready. <sighs> All right. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. All right. All right. Let's go. You ready? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Are you ready? Ready? Yeah. Uh, 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 don't try that at home. Uh -huh.